Welcome back to Cityscape. I'd like to announce a new series that I am starting. It's called Secret People. The idea emerged when I realized that many of the historical figures I wanted to cover did not have a well-documented life. This lack of record prevented me from doing a full biography episode on them, like I have done with Henry Ford or Howard Hughes. The Secret People series is a way for me to put the spotlight on unknown individuals with remarkable achievements. Instead of covering their life in detail, I will cover their contribution and its impact on society at large. In this first episode, we will cover Gustave Le Bon, a French polymath whose area of work included anthropology, psychology, sociology, medicine, and physics. Le Bon is best known for his work on crowd psychology, however, La Psychologie des Foules. The English version is called The Crowd, a study of the popular mind. My interest in building social networks is what led me to this book. According to Le Bon, crowds are not the sum of the individuals that compose them. They have a mind on their own. Crowds possess distinct qualities such as impulsiveness, irritability, an incapacity to reason, and exaggerated sentiment. Most critically, Le Bon claims that an act performed in a crowd is incredibly contagious. It tends to spread amongst its individual members. Crowds are also very suggestible and can only think in extremes. They do not know any middle ground. To communicate with a crowd, do not reason with it as you would an individual. Instead, Le Bon suggests the following formula. Affirmation, repetition, imitation, and prestige. In a nutshell, repeat your affirmation over and over until it sinks into the collective subconscious. It does not matter if the affirmation is true or not true. It only needs to be simple. Repeat that affirmation over and over, long enough and loud enough, and it will sink into the collective subconscious. The masses have never thirsted after truth. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. Gustave Le Bon was not just a psychologist by any means. He was a well-versed physicist. In 1908, he published The Evolution of Forces, where he postulates the energy-mass equivalence which Einstein later discovered. He also prophesied the atomic age in the same work. I was deeply impressed with Le Bon, so I began to systematically read all of his books. Since I am fluent in French, I was able to also read his untranslated materials. To my surprise, I discovered an even more powerful book, La Psychologie de l'Education, or The Psychology of Education. In this work, Le Bon makes several key points regarding education. Le Bon's first point is that moral education, that is, initiative, courage, vigilance, observation, perseverance, self control, discipline, etc., are far more important than intellectual learning. Moral education forms character. Le Bon argues that character education should be thought vigorously, for it is the primary determinant of individual success. He also points out that as a civilization advances, they tend to forego character education in favor of intellectual learning, a mistake that always causes their downfall. In educational endeavors, Le Bon preaches that the concrete must always be thought before the abstract. Classrooms can only teach the abstract, for the concrete can only be thought by doing. The order of teaching is important because abstract symbols need concrete objects to associate with them. For an example, when a student sees mathematical symbols but has no concrete objects from experience to tie those symbols to, that student does not really know math, regardless of he or she successfully performed mathematical operations. All subjects, therefore, should primarily be thought by doing. Only after the action is done can the abstract be covered in classrooms. So concrete experience by doing should always precede theoretical abstract teachings 
in classrooms. Lastly, Le Bon states that learning is an entirely subconscious process. We do not learn things consciously by reading books or listening to lectures. Writing, walking, bicycling, speaking are all actions we learn without conscious thinking. We pick them up subconsciously through exposure and active repetition. To give an illustration, you cannot learn how to ride a bike through lectures or books. You have to constantly repeat the act of riding a bike until your subconscious picks up the pattern. Le Bon argues this truth also applies to academic fields. Math, physics, engineering, chemistry are not learned by reading books or lectures in classrooms. These skills are subconsciously picked up through concrete exposure and repeated performance until they become subconscious. Anything less than that, Le Bon argues, is not learning. Books have their place as post-reference guides, not learning materials. Those who are interested in politics, social networks, or advertising should definitely read The Crowd. Others more interested in self-development should buy his work on education. If you cannot read French, I have created my own English translation in an ebook called Become More Intelligent. Links to buy them is in the description. So who has Le Bon influence? Well, his work on crowds has influenced Roosevelt, Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, Vladimir Lenin, and Sigmund Freud's nephew, Edward Bernay. For better or worse, these men have used Le Bon's techniques to masterfully command crowds. I only hope my viewers are more responsible with this power. The type of hero dear to a crowd will always have the semblance of a Caesar. His insignia attracts them, his authority overawes them, and his sword instills them with fear. See you next time.